love the feeling of being renewed. To protect the things most precious to you. To stay beautiful every single day. To breathe just like we do because you are truly delicate. Protecting the ones who've been with us through the years with Sailac Care, the only wood coating that truly protects you. Sailac Wood Coatings from Jet. Welcome to Limdi News Week. I'm Ashwini Vedakan and we begin with a roundup of local news. As of Friday, the total number of COVID-19 infected patients in the island stands at 533,860, with the number of recoveries reaching 493,674. The number of deaths now stands at 13,562. Sri Lankan singer Johanny De Silva is poised to make her Bollywood debut in the film Thank God. The young talent will be singing the Hindi version of her hit track Manike Magehite for the upcoming movie. The Thank God movie is set to feature celebrities Ajay Devgan, Siddharth Malhotra and Rakul Preet Singh. Director Indra Kumar acknowledged Yohani's rise to stardom and expressed gratitude for being able to feature this blockbuster track in his film. Yohani thanked the director, producers and co-producers for this honour and said that she is looking forward to revisiting India soon. <laughs> Sri Lanka ranked 65 out of 116 countries in the Global Hunger Index or GHI for 2021. The GHI is a tool designed to measure and track hunger at global, regional and national levels. Its scores are annually calculated to assess progress and setbacks in combating hunger. The calculations take into account data related to the share of the population that is undernourished while child wasting, child stunting and mortality are also considered. The Minister of Energy stated that Sri Lanka and Oman will sign an agreement for 3.6 billion US dollar credit facilities to purchase fuel next week. The credit facility will be settled over 20 years and a grace period of 5 years will be given for the loan settlement. On Thursday, the first batch of nano-liquid nitrogen fertilizer to be used in agricultural activities during the Maha season reached Colombo. From India on the A330-300 aircraft, the largest cargo aircraft owned by Sri Lankan Airlines. A total consignment of 3.1 million litres of nano-nitrogen liquid fertilizer has been ordered the first consignment delivered 100,000 litres and a further 500,000 litres is planned to be imported this week. Measures are taken to distribute these fertilisers to farmers through the agrarian centres located in the Ampara, Batticolo and Trincomalee districts where paddy cultivation has already commenced. The Chairman of Earth Restoration, Dr. Ranil Senanayak, has stated sustainable agriculture is food security. In an exclusive interview for LMD's Green Publication, he expressed his view on how the country should plan towards an optimal output as opposed to achieving a maximum output as he believes that it would not be sustainable in the long run. The inspirational ecologist further explored the significance of planning for inflexible thresholds in agriculture. Moving on to business news, in an exclusive interview with LMD, the Senior Manager of Customer Relationship Management at Diesel and Motor Engineering or DEMO, Sonali Jayala, remarked that a litmus test for a company's customer experience consciousness will be how businesses deliver experiences and services amid the prevailing global climate. She noted that businesses keeping a real-time check on the changing customer preferences has led to behavioural changes. Acknowledging the importance of innovating and redesigning customer journeys, Jalat emphasized the benefit of leveraging customer experiences to garner business gains strategically without risking customer burnouts. Research conducted by LMD revealed that Sri Lanka's total exports from January to June 2021 was 1.3 million rupees. 
The value of total imports stood at 2.3 million rupees. The research further revealed that these figures indicated a 31.9 and a 39% change when compared to the results of the same period of the previous year. Sri Lanka ranked 37 out of 47 countries for its ability to restart its manufacturing industry due to the number of obstacles it faces in achieving a full recovery in the year's Global Manufacturing Risk Index. Published by Cushman and Wakefield, the index assesses countries based on four key areas which include bounce back, conditions, costs and risks. The parity between the US dollar and the Sri Lankan rupee was down by 201 rupees and 4 cents. According to reports from the Colombo Stock Exchange, the All Share Price Index or ASPI as of Friday stood at 9915.22. We'll be back with the latest in global news after a short break. Thank you so much for all the support you gave me, guys. Okay. Today, I got promoted. Those who spread goodness radiate happiness to everyone around them. Introducing LOLC Finance Credit Cards. Fuel the goodness in you. Welcome back and here's the latest in global news. As of Friday, the number of global COVID-19 infected patients stands at 243 million with the number of recoveries reaching 220 million and the number of deaths have now surpassed 4.9 million. The price of Brent crude oil on Friday hovered between $84.02, $85.30. Taking a look at the global calendar, the special events for the upcoming week are the second Joint Bank of England, Banque de France, IMF, OECD, Banca Italia workshop on international capital flows and financial policies scheduled to be held on the 25th in Paris, France. The virtual Gartner IT and Supply Chain Symposiums to be held from the 25th to the 27th in the Asia Pacific and Americas respectively. The virtual International Conference on Urban Drainage 2021 to be held from the 25th to the 28th. The virtual ITB Asia to be held from the 25th to the 29th and the Virtual Business Opportunity Seminar 2021 with Austria to be held on the 27th. China's economic growth of 4.9% between July and September from a year earlier is noted to have showcased the country's slowest pace in a year, especially when compared to the 8% growth in the previous quarter. This suggests that the country's recovery is weakening, power shortages, outbreaks of COVID-19 and pressures exerted on a number of industries in Beijing are likely causes for China's dampened economic growth. And that's all the news we have for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.